Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. You know, I've been interested in improving the way that project teams address requirements for about 30 years now. And even after all of this time, the first problem we have to address in the requirements business is simply one of terminology. Some people call the whole discipline requirements engineering, and others call it all requirements management. So sometimes when people talk about requirements management, they're thinking very broadly, but I'm using that term in a, a more narrow sense here today. I like to subdivide the whole domain of requirements engineering into two major categories, requirements development and requirements management. Now the goal of requirements development is to deduce capture and agree upon a set of functional requirements and product characteristics that will achieve the stated project business objectives. So there are four subcategories within requirements development. The first is elicitation, all the things we do to get requirements. Sometimes people talk about requirements gathering, and I don't like to use that term because to me it conveys an impression of walking around with a basket and collecting them, just putting them in the basket. Oh, there's one, let's put that in. Oh, here's a big one, can you help me put this in? Uh, there's an element of that, but elicitation is a lot more than gathering or collecting requirements. It also involves discovering requirements and inventing requirements and deducing requirements. So there's more to it than that, but we have to have something to work with. So we start with elicitation. Then we have to do some analysis. And analysis involves understanding those requirements, uh, decomposing them into an appropriate level of detail until we feel like we understand and communicate them effectively. It involves uh, representing requirements information in multiple ways, such as through drawing visual analysis models, diagrams that represent requirements knowledge. Uh, it involves activities such as prioritizing requirements, which ones are more important and more timely than others. We need to record what we've accumulated in some shareable form, and that's the task of requirement specification, and there's a variety of techniques we can use for that, but most people use natural language. Finally, we need to validate that the requirements that we've accumulated will in fact meet the uh, business needs of the project once they're correctly implemented and that they will make our customers happy. So there's these four major activities, but this doesn't happen in a simple linear left to right process. There's iteration and cycling that takes place along the way. But at some point, you're going to get a set of requirements that you think serves as a suitable foundation for the next portion of the work that you're going to do. Whether that portion means, okay, we've got all the requirements, let's just go build the entire product, or whether that portion says, we've got enough requirements that we can build this first 10% of the product, let's go into iteration number one and implement what we have so far. Doesn't matter. At some point, you've got that set of, of validated requirements. And once we have some set of requirements, actually once you have a requirement, then we have to get serious about requirements management because requirements management involves, uh, among other things, dealing with change. And as soon as you have a requirement that you think you understand, there's a chance you might have to deal with changes that come along for that. So requirements management really is a matter of dealing with requirements once you have them in hand. So that's what we're going to focus on today is some of the basic practices that can help you deal with those sorts of requirements. So here are the key requirements management practices as I see them. The principal goals are to agree on a set of requirements that can be used as the foundation for the development work that follows and ensure that those requirements are accurately implemented in the product. So first thing we do is establish a requirement baseline, and a baseline is that set of agreed upon requirements. Uh, for, again, either you know, the next portion of the work, whether it's 100% or just a few percent of the ultimate product. Uh, our requirements evolve over time, and so if we're writing requirements in some uh, recorded form like a document, we have to deal with versions of those, so we don't get confused. You don't want people working from an obsolete version of the requirements. You don't want people uh, have ambiguity about what represents the current set of requirements that we're, we're building something from. But change is a reality. It's foolish to pretend that change is not going to happen. So you need to put into place and enforce a change control process, some mechanisms by which changes can be collected, uh, recorded, evaluated, communicated, and action taken based on those. An important part of that change control process is to do some impact analysis so that once we have uh, considered a requirement change, of what its implications are. And as we go along, we're going to talk about each of these in some detail. 
In addition to the statement of an individual requirement, one thing we might want to do is to uh, store requirement attributes. Attributes are additional bits of requirements knowledge that go beyond the statement of the requirement and give us a richer understanding of each of those. And one of those attributes might be the status of each requirement as it goes from concept down to ultimately implemented and verified requirement in the product. Another important part of requirements management is to trace the requirements that we have into all of the downstream deliverables that we create because of each of those requirements. These could be designs or code or tests or, or other things that you create because a requirement exists. And the last topic I want to talk about is uh, storing requirements not in a traditional document form, but in some sort of a requirements management tool. So these are the, the best basic practices that can help you achieve the requirements management goals. Now notice that when I refer to a requirements document, it need not necessarily be a traditional word processing document. Requirements can be stored in a variety of forms, including word documents, spreadsheets, index cards, databases, or commercial requirements management tools, uh, wikis, a lot of different techniques are used. So regardless of how you store them, we have a set of requirements that serve as the foundation for the subsequent work that we do, and we need to apply these kinds of practices to manage those effectively over time. So let's take a look at each of these in turn. The term baseline is a configuration management term. A baseline represents a snapshot in time, a work product or a set of work products that can serve as a starting point for changes and serves as a foundation for subsequent activities that are performed on the project. <clears throat> so we can define this baseline as a reviewed, approved, and agreed upon set of requirements that are committed to a specific product release or iteration. Now, I'm sure that many of you go through some sort of a sign-off process or some sort of approval procedure for your requirements deliverables. And sign-off is really a matter of approving that baseline, making sure that the appropriate decision makers understand and agree that, yes, this is what we intend to build. Sign-off really mean in your organization. Uh, sometimes it's kind of an empty ritual. It doesn't mean anything. We just know uh, we have to go through some sign-off thing and... It's just a, a hoop we jump through. Uh, sometimes sign-off means, gee, a manager was presented with a form with his name on it and a line above his name. And he signed because otherwise nobody will write any code. But that doesn't mean he read it or understood it or agrees to it. It just it was a step he had to go through. Well, I think requirement sign-off or approval should have some meaning. And I suggest that you decide in your organization exactly what does it mean when we do reach agreement on some baseline set of requirements. So here's a possible interpretation. It, when I sign off on requirements, whatever physical act that involves, what am I saying? Well, I should be saying something like this. I agree that this is a foundation for the next stage of work to begin. I also agree that we will make changes as necessary following our change control process. And here comes the part that nobody likes. I agree that making changes in these requirements might require that we renegotiate our project commitments. Nobody likes that part because everybody wants change to be free. And the fact is, change is never free. It doesn't matter whether you like that or not. It's just the way things work. And we have to make sure that all of the stakeholders who are involved in making these decisions and who are affected by these decisions understand and accept that very uh, important reality. Even the, the act of discussing a change in the hallway as you're walking down the, the hall and bumping into one of your colleagues with an idea, that takes some time even if you don't decide to implement the change after all. So nothing is free. But some things happen when we define a baseline. That's the point at which we have to, or at least should, begin a formal change control process. You know, before you've agreed on a baseline, you know